You are watching With a Cup of Tea, a production of This House of Books, an independent bookstore cooperative and tea shop in downtown Billings. Now, here's our show. Okay, today I have uh, with me Doug Ammons, and uh, Doug has written a book, A Darkness Lit by Heroes, and I'd like to talk about that today. But first of all, I think I'd like to get to know you a little better. So, uh, who are you? Where were you born and raised? Well, I'm basically a native Montana, and I spent all of my life, but the first couple of months, um, in Missoula, western Montana, and so basically born and bred there for 60 years, and through all the wilderness and the mountains and uh, the rivers and so forth. So, so my, my roots are in Montana. Okay. So what do you do for a living? Well, for about 30 years, I was uh, uh, lead editor for two very large international scientific journals. I have a PhD in psychology. I'm a trained research scientist. And so that's what I did. And about two years ago, I decided to quit that and become a writer. And so I'm a full-time writer. A full-time writer. Okay. So, to this book, uh, when we were talking about it earlier, you said that uh, you were writing a book about Butte and that uh, this Granite Mountain Speculator Mine Disaster in 1917 was uh, going to be a chapter in that book. Um, tell me about that book and uh, uh, a little more about it. What happened? You've, I mean, well, suddenly here we have a whole book out of what was going to be a chapter. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, you, you never know the twists and turns of fate and what it has in store for you. So my wife and I were got very interested um, uh, in a particular character who's actually the grandfather of a, of a very elderly neighbor of ours um, and who was an Irish immigrant in the 1890s. And in thinking that, well, this would be a fascinating story, just starting off kind of with that premise. We heard a lot of, a lot of uh, anecdotes from Duke, who's the, the elderly neighbor, about his grandfather, who was named Matt Canning. Mm -hmm. And so we dove into that and we thought, well, this is really cool. And, and so first it was just kind of an interesting thing, and then it became compelling because it turned out Matt Canning was a, was a tremendous, uh, almost uh, unbelievable character and who actually was uh, uh, lived through an era in, in Ireland that was very tumultuous and then was injected, you know, by, I mean, basically he ran away with a young girl, you know, he, basically his age, they ran away from Ireland and went straight to Butte. So, so then we started understanding a lot more about Butte through Duke. And um, what it really amounted to was that, that Duke uh, opened up Butte for us. And we realized that Butte was, probably the craziest, wildest, richest, freest place in the entire history of our civilization from maybe 1885 to 1920. Just uh, a stunning uh, uh, social changes and the entire uh, industrialization of the United States. And, and Matt Canning was actually right in the middle of that. So that was, we started realizing that as we went and dug things out. And so we started writing a book about Matt Canning. and. Um, one of the one of the things that came up was uh, the speculator mine disaster, uh, and Canning wasn't the center part of that, but he had um, a son-in-law who was a rescuer, and his next door neighbor was the guy called the Top Man, who was right there when the fire started, and so he and he was a miner himself before that, so he had all these. It was a way to just incorporate this chapter on a personal basis, but then what happened when I was studying that is I had one of the uh, archivists plop in my lap something that the archival people had just found, which was this long lost, 90 year lost uh, uh, document called the Coroner's Inquest that had 600 pages of eyewitness testimony by surviving, about 70 surviving miners. And uh, nobody had ever seen it, nobody ever looked at it, and so I opened it up and immediately was just drawn in and captured by the huge puzzles that it presented. And so in doing that, I still wanted to kind of summarize the whole thing as a chapter. And very quickly, my, my chapter expanded from 20 pages to 100, then 150, it was cut down. Then it went back up to 80, and then 100, and 150. And, 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 and so at some point in there, we just realized that this demanded a book of its own. It's a whole book. 
Well, one of the things that impresses me is you took that eyewitness testimony and you were able to correlate it with uh, maps that you were able to locate. And you were able nearly to say exactly where people were and you even had the words that they were speaking at the time. Yeah, that's because the, the inquest was uh, so detailed. And so I, I realized very quickly that, that if, I, if I could just find a couple maps to figure out where key things happened, it would help a lot. So I engaged in this gigantic sleuthing uh, uh, episode, uh, just investigation into the restrict, so-called restricted archives there. You have to have special permission. Um, and I uh, was able to track down a few miscellaneous maps, and the very first one actually solved two mysteries, ongoing mysteries that nobody had ever figured out about. What happened to one of the guys who saved 20 other men? What happened to him? Where were they? And so I immediately knew that if I could get more, then I could do the same kind of thing. So I did, and, and it ended up getting maybe a hundred old mind maps, and was able to reconstruct by hook or crook, because um, the core maps were gone, so I had to reconstruct things out of secondary types of maps. Um, but I could reconstruct everything that happened. I could identify where every guy went eventually. Mm -hmm. So just tracing out scenes, and eventually the whole thing started really coming together. And, and at that point, I realized that I could actually invert the writing. And instead of writing a historical treatise about, well, the testimony on page 63, you know, line 17 said this. Instead of doing that, I was getting to the point where I was integrating all this. And I could actually, again, that's what I mean by inverting, invert it and take, go into the guy's mindset and describe the whole thing from uh, inside the miner's experience. Well, my, my sense, too, when I, when I started reading this practically from the first page, is I, I felt like I was a beginning miner who's just been hired and I was learning the ropes, you know, and finding out what it was like to be a miner. And that's, uh, I mean, that, so in order to, to get into telling the story uh, to readers, um, from the miner standpoint, that's what we had to do. So I had to recreate all that, and I worked with three elderly uh, uh, Butte mining engineers who probably spent 50, 55 years, each one of them, on the hill or in mining, and also had a big interest in history. So I used them, uh, and they're, you know, I mean, they're very willing to talk, and uh, so they helped me figure out some of the conundrums, and they helped me figure out how to talk about the mining to, to pull people into this completely inhuman and bizarre environment and to do so naturally. So that's why it was written. I mean, I probably wrote anywhere between a thousand to two thousand pages, probably more like two thousand pages of experimental stuff, and it was distilled down into, you know, about two hundred. Well it's an amazing book. The thing uh, the thing about about you, though, is yeah, that, yeah. you know, you're better known, actually, for uh, your writing in sports, outdoor sports. Uh, you have uh, a couple of books, Whitewater Philosophy and uh, uh, The Laugh of the Water Nymph, that I'm uh, enjoying right now. But uh, it seems like this book and this book are two different kinds of things, aren't they? Uh, well, that's the difference between the surface and the undercurrents. So on the surface, you're uh, in one. You're you're in a, a beautiful environment, usually free flowing water in a wilderness area. Uh, but on the but, uh, but underneath in that is what I was always interested in is you know how's that changing me? How am I learning about that? What's the effect on me? And uh, you know what is the effect of that journey through this inhuman environment? You know it's a place that's deadly unless you know certain skills. So what what are the keys that allow the, allow you to understand and project yourself as a human into an inhuman world? Right, and that's a universal. That's what the human uh, 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 species has done, right? And so we've gone to the moon. We've, you know, we've gone underground. This is equivalent to the a moon shot, you know, in terms of the difficulty of men either living in outer space where where there's it, it's so inhuman that the tiniest little error will kill them, right? Well, it's not very different going underground. A, doing the same thing, finding a path through a gigantic rapid or over a waterfall, it's basically the same thing. Your spaceship is your kayak, you know, your oxygen is your paddle and what you're breathing <laughs> and so forth. So the tool's different. The, the overall, the outer uh, uh, clothing differ, but everything underneath is the same. And so when I, uh, the thing that I'm probably known for in kayaking is doing these, what people consider to be 
utterly outrageous and supposedly death-defying uh, uh, feats, and a lot of so, you know, in, in places that haven't been run before, and nobody's ever thought to run there because they just look too dangerous. So. Um, they all think I'm insane. I come at these things in order to make them sane. Uh, and so a lot of my writing has to do with what, what goes into, what do we learn when we go to those environments? So all of that, all of that uh, directly uh, affects my ability to, to, this is just another environment, to step, my ability to step into this alien underground environment and the people who are incredibly skilled and the logic by which you make that into a semi-human environment. Right, so, so the mining is like that. It's just exactly the same kind of journey. Even though you'll never see a whitewater rapid uh, and a beautiful forest and a big canyon underneath the ground, you will find other things. You'll find incredibly beautiful mineralization and uh, equally bizarre and, and stunning sweeps of geology. Your, your view is limited because you can't see through rock, right? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, but people find means to extend themselves into these inhuman environments. And I find that absolutely fascinating. So all the adventure stuff about changing perspective, understanding the environment, finding a path through it, and, and then writing in an exciting storytelling way, right, from inside, all those are applied in this story. Well, where can we get this book? Well, right here at the House of Books. Yay! <laughs> and uh, eventually, uh, uh, hope not too eventually, but hopefully in the next two weeks or so, I'll my, I'll have my website revamped so that this is front and center. Okay, so you have a website. I do, DougAmmons.com. www.dougammons.com. And right now, if you go on there, it's, it's all focused on the adventure writing and films that I've done for National Geographic and other, uh, other entities and also independently. Um, so I'm just uh, setting it up so that it so that it reflects this book and also the connection between the books. Because I think most people will come at this and go, oh my God, there's mining on one hand and, and whitewater kayaking. And, uh, yeah. and so they don't get it because the, the, the two outer manifestations are too different. But yeah. they do get it immediately when I start pointing out or start talking about what's going on underneath. The basic currents of what people do and what drives them and what they have to learn are all the same in all those environments. And I think more so than anything else, this, this shows in the struggle what humans can become. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the most profound beauties of what humans are capable of show up when the chips are totally down and people are right on the brink. Both every, everything that humans can be and are capable of show up in those kinds of circumstances. And it's, so at, at the same time it's heartrending it's equally uh, inspiring for what our capabilities are as 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 humans and as people, and, well, and so to me, it's this. It is truly an ultimate uh, adventure in the greatest possible sense. Well, thanks. We have Doug Ammons and his latest book, *Darkness Lit by Heroes*. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. This has been a production of This House of Books. If you'd like to be a part of the cooperative, please visit thishouseofbooks.com slash get involved.